yeah. So, the year is 2022, and at this point, I don't think anybody can tell you that content creation or full-time content creation or being a creative as a full-timer is not going to earn you any money or it's not a viable career option. Nobody can tell you that. It's 2022. We've seen people live off their creativity and it's working. And as my friend uh, Gloria Buckman said, dear creative pro, don't let anybody tell you that starting a business or starting a creative endeavor solely to make money to look after yourself and your family isn't okay. It's fine to do that. Don't let anybody tension you. Don't let people make you feel like, yeah, you know, you are monetizing your hobbies and it's on. No. People live off their creativity and their creative, I mean, content creation or whatever it is, and it's okay to do that. So yes, it's a business. And as a business, there's also the angle of exchange, whereby you put something out, something of value, and somebody pays you for that thing of value. It can be your time, it can be a service you're offering or a tangible product, which is fine, it's business. And when it comes to business, well, for example, there are models or pe how people run their businesses. And the business model of the platform on which <clears throat> you're watching this video, which is most likely YouTube, is that, well, content creators feed their platform with enough content like the one you're watching right now. And based on the fact that it gets people to watch or views or audience or eyeballs to see it, they use that or they use the audiences to sell to advertisers. As in advertisers put their products and services to your audiences that may be watching in hopes that somebody might be interested in the thing that was advertised on your video. So that is basically the business model for YouTube. You are rewarded by putting out a lot of content and that content when advertisers put their adverts on gets you some kind of money, which is called what the AdSense. Right. The question I've been thinking about or the question I asked on Twitter or I tweeted was, I'm curious, how do we create a strong business model and environment for the Ghanaian YouTube space? And how do we get real mutually beneficial and relevant business partnerships that will position YouTube content creation as a viable B2B advertising option. So here I'm concerned about um, beyond AdSense, um, there are YouTube channels almost everywhere in the world and yeah, YouTube brands which have brands advertise on their channels specifically or sponsored videos specifically. So it can be a product or a service, it can be Skillshare or Sony or whatever it is advertising specifically for a product they've brought out. So how can we create such an environment for the Ghanaian YouTuber or the Ghanaian YouTube space for us to be able to earn outside um, the AdSense? Now, the reason why this is um, strong or it, I'm curious to know more about this is that uh, everybody starts their YouTube channel and based on what they may have heard in terms of how much people earn on YouTube or how possible it is to earn so much on YouTube, they often want to earn money with the views and AdSense. And outside of that, well, there's the brand uh, sponsorship and all that. But the culture of that brand sponsorship is not as strong in Ghana, which is what bothers me. How do we make it strong in Ghana for people to earn outside AdSense or even earn before your channel qualifies for this uh, YouTube partner program? So that is what bothers me a lot and I've been trying to find answers to how do we make it such that uh, YouTube content creators can earn so much uh, more than they are earning at the moment. Because when you look at the CPM, which is the cost per thousand views, currently Ghana's CPM rate is very, very low. If you have, um, <clears throat> per your analytics, if you have a lot of views, or most of your views, let's say 70% of your views coming from Ghana, your AdSense uh, at the end of the 28 days is not a lot compared to channels which have viewers from USA, Canada, and other parts of Europe. So it's more like even when you are creating 
solely based on views and adsense as a revenue generation model for your youtube business it's not a lot if all your viewers are coming from ghana which means that you need to do extra to earn more so how do you do this now um, with my little business knowledge that I have, I want to see if I can also break things down a little bit for us and for the average person to understand what it means to run your content creation platform as a business. Now, like I was saying in the beginning, a business is an exchange. Whether it's your time, service or a tangible product, you need to put something out there to be able to get something. And the thing you're putting out there is your product. Now, when it comes to marketing, there's the four pillars or four basic principles of marketing, which are the four P's of marketing. If you've never heard of it before, you might want to Google it after this. I'll try my possible best to explain a little bit about the four P's of marketing, and then you can research further on this one. So the first one is the product. The second one is the price of that product. And the third one is the place. And the last one is promotion. That is what you need to understand as the basic uh, principles that <clears throat> govern marketing and business. So there's a product, there's a price of that product, there's a place and there's the promotion. What is a product? This you're watching right now is the product that I am offering. Does it offer value to you watching right now? Are you learning something? Are you entertained? Are you sticking here as in are you staying are you watching for this long is that enough for youtube to actually make something off this video by putting ads on it if so then i get a little bit of revenue in turn for my effort of putting my product out here now when it comes to the product how quality is the product um who is this product relevant to and how will advertisers strategically sell those products that they think that the people watching my videos will be interested in on it. So that's that the creative uh, exchange or the triangle or whatever it is. There's my products, there's advertisers, there's an audience, and there's the value creation uh, chain, which is happening. So the price of also your products also depends on the numbers and the quality. So the quality of your products here um, is what you're putting out there. What is your videos about? How are your videos presented? How are they packaged? Who watches your videos and how, <clears throat> how, how, what brands would want to associate themselves with the level of quality of the videos you're putting out there and how many people are reacting or uh, interacting with these videos? That, I think, informs the price of your videos. So if you were to say that you wanted to charge a brand for this amount of money for putting an ad on your videos or your channel, then it also means that you're giving them the kind of value whereby when they come to your channel or when it comes to the numbers, besides the numbers, there's also the creative output whereby you, whereby you produce the kind of content that they want to associate with. Now, the place here is where you shoot this, um, <clears throat> these videos. Are you a travel content uh, creator or you are doing a sit down talk like I'm doing now and the place also in marketing in general means where you can be located so it can be on the web or yeah that's in virtual office where you're recording now where your office is where you're I mean creating your product um, as well as where your product is distributed so place affects both where the product is created how people can approach you and where your products are distributed. And then promotion is when you're done doing all these things, how do you communicate what you have to people for more people to come and watch? Um, promotion also happens with how your products look. So even the look of your products affects or it plays a role in the promotion because your brand look is also promotion in itself. It's also communication in itself. So what kind of quality are you putting out there? What products are you putting out there? And are they, the, are they the kind of products or the standard that the advertiser would want or the brand would want to associate themselves with? So these are some of the things that I feel that the average person who wants to start a YouTube channel should look at. And like I've already mentioned, when you have all these things in check, which means that you have to invest a lot. Well, when we say this, sometimes it's a bit difficult because uh, in order for you to do this, you need to start from somewhere, which is also fine. 
and invest as you go on. Now, the investment, I've realized that um, most people, uh, which is understandable, things are very expensive. The country we are living in with our CD and dollar ratio makes it very difficult for you to acquire some of these things that will make you uh, be able to produce such content at such a high level for people to appreciate and brands to want to associate themselves with. So I understand that. But there's also the aspect of um, creating with what you have, which is your mobile phone or whatever it is, but understanding the principles of creating or the creativity. So you may not necessarily have the red camera or whatever camera that will give certain effects to how your videos look, but you understand the principles of storytelling. You understand the principles of uh, lighting. You understand the principles of sound enough to know that if I'm recording a video at the beach, for example, then I need something to cover my microphone to block the wind sound so that it, it makes it audible enough for people to still listen. If I'm recording a video in the dark, then I need to make sure that I have lights. And if I have lights, is the light soft enough? How do I get soft lights without breaking the bank? And if I do, how do I also create um, video sequences that make people stick around or watch without feeling bored? Am I putting out like uh, 50 seconds of one shot for people to look at? when I'm trying to tell a story or I am telling a story in a sequence that people can easily follow and tell that, oh, so this is what the person did without necessarily having to tell them what I did. So some of these things are also things that I have realized about the contents that we put out there mostly locally. And yes, it's difficult to learn these things. It's difficult to edit these things. It's very difficult. It's time consuming. But when you think about it, the brand that you want to come sponsor your videos and you know pay you for putting out content has also invested a lot in building and you may have the numbers but do you have conversion rates people are watching the video but are people actually buying are your audience do you know your audience enough to know that this brand partnership will benefit them in such a way that if you bring this brand on board you can defend with your numbers and your business model that besides the AdSense, they should pay you for advertising their products on your channel. So yeah, there's a lot of conversation to be had around content as a business in Ghana and um, how, to, how to get better. I, I want to get better. I, want, I, would, I wish for us to have uh, an environment whereby even the CPM is high enough if you're not getting enough uh, advertisers or sponsored videos, you can still make enough with a CPM. But CPM is also affected by quality and the consistency. Uh, I remember uh, what uh, Nana Shanti, a YouTuber and a creator as well, putting out there that um, she's not seen a lot of videos this year, which I, I had also noticed. And yes, people came to reply that yes, it's, it's, it's tiring, it's difficult, and the ideas like have run out. And it's also not very rewarding when you think about it, that even when your channel has been monetized, you're not making so much. So some of these things are the questions or the challenges that we need to find solutions as a collective to. And if we can foster these conversations, if we can find ways to make sure that we're both learning or we are all learning and finding ways to make YouTube as attractive and as a viable business source for advertisers and as creators to earn as full-time creators, then it will benefit the generation that will come after us. Because, well, I think the U.S. market, for example, is a mature market. They've been doing it for such a long time. It even started from there, so it's understandable. But there's so much we can learn from them and replicate, and replicate in our own setting, not try to do exactly what they're doing, but canonize it as much. But like I was saying, there are some core principles that we need to know your sound, your light, your video quality, and your storytelling, how to engage people enough. And besides engaging the people, the relevance of the topics that you are producing and how it benefits the audience. Because when it benefits the audience, they keep coming back. When the audience keep coming back, advertisers know that, yes, you retain more people 
and they can bring their ads onto your channel. And brands also knowing the kind of content you create will definitely attract the people who they think might be potential uh, customers to them. So that's basically my uh, very long rant about the content business in Ghana, which is a bit bothersome when I think about it. And I think there's a lot that we need to talk about and there's a lot that we need to do. So if you're a content creator and you, this, I mean, strikes you as something that you've also been thinking about and you have some solutions, kindly put it in the comment section and let's have a conversation about it. I could go on and on and on and on, but I think that I'll end it here and figure out a way to foster conversation from here and let us all learn from each other and see how we can better the environment because a competitive environment, a competitive environment is rather beneficial to all of us because competitiveness also improves price and price means more revenue and more revenue means you get the time to go full time and concentrate and create even better videos. So yeah, my name is Kwame and uh, these are some of my thoughts. Catch you in the next video.